This is a Dell Optiplex 7010. I bought this computer on eBay for just £55. Specs wise, this computer came with an Intel Core i5-3470, 8GB of RAM and a 120GB SSD, though I've made a few upgrades to this machine. I upgraded from 8GB of RAM to 16GB, I replaced the 120GB SSD with a 240GB SSD, and to turn this computer into a computer that can actually play video games, I added an RX 550. I don't recommend using a 550 because for just a little bit more money you can get a much faster GPU, I'm only using it because I had it in storage. If you want to see a follow up video where I test this system with an i7 and a beefy GPU, please let me know in the comments below. This is probably the cheapest PC I've ever built. In fact, I already had the extra parts in storage so I didn't go out and spend any extra money on this PC. Despite that, I'm still naming this a £100 gaming PC because that's roughly how much it would cost if I included those parts. So if you want to build a cheap gaming PC, this pre-built is quite a good base. It has 4 DIMM slots, 2 full size PCI Express slots, it has quite a bit of space so you're not just limited to low profile graphics cards, and it has a standard ATX power supply with no proprietary connectors. So there's a lot of upgrade potential for a machine like this. I actually have quite a few video ideas that involve this PC, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Okay, so I'm not the first person on the internet to buy a used office PC and throw a GPU in it. But one thing I decided to do differently was install Linux. To be more specific, I'm using Nabara Linux, which is a fork of Fedora made by Glorious Egg Roll designed for gaming. You might be wondering why I decided to install Linux rather than Windows, given that this is a gaming PC and not all games run on Linux. Well, the main reason is that I'm a Linux user myself and I wanted to do something different out of curiosity. Another reason is because in October 2025, Microsoft is going to discontinue Windows 10 and machines from this era don't officially support Windows 11 due to a lack of TPM2 support. It is possible to install Windows 11 by making some registry edits in the Windows installer, but the truth is some people may not need or even want to use Windows 11. I ended up benchmarking quite a few games. Normally I would comment over the gameplay, but I'll let the results speak for themselves. Although you will have to excuse my terrible gameplay as I couldn't see the screen properly due to my camera being in the way. I was honestly very impressed with the results. While the GPU is definitely a bottleneck, the fact that we can even play games like Apex Legends and Dead by Daylight for this price is really impressive. Now, I'm aware there are going to be people watching this video who aren't familiar with Linux, and might be wondering what the experience has been like using Nabara on this PC. Well, it's pretty good. Since Nabara Linux was designed for gaming, it already comes pre-installed with Steam and Lutris. 
and it also has a program called Nabara Welcome, which allows you to update your system, install proprietary NVIDIA drivers, and programs like Discord and OBS with just the click of a button, which is very handy for people who haven't used Linux before. To run non-native Steam games on Linux, you'll need to go to Settings, Compatibility, Enable Steam Play for all other titles, and then just restart Steam. Proton is a compatibility layer that allows Windows-only Steam games to run on Linux, but if it's installed on your system, you can also use it for games that aren't on Steam. For games from GOG or the Epic Game Store, you can use a program called Heroic, which isn't installed by default, but it only requires one terminal command to install. And in terms of actually playing the games, the ones I tested didn't require any configuration or tweaks. Just install them and run them like you would on Windows. I had a feeling Dead by Daylight and Apex Legends would cause problems because they have anti-cheats, which are a bit hit or miss on Linux, but they seem to have no problem. The only problem I did run into was the fact I couldn't get an FPS counter running in Wolfenstein. Anyway, that's all for today's video, happy Easter, and until next time, cheerio.